Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be back at the Institute and uh, speak in the members' colloquium. The, the, the talk will be centered around the uh, uh, work which is joined with Sean Burgain and Peter Sarnak, and it started here at the Institute 17 years ago. Uh, I will say a word about motivation and and that he said in a moment, but let me begin by introducing the Markov equation. Um, so this is um, Jandrovich Markov of Markov chains fame. And this is his thesis. So the equation is the following simple equation. Markov triples are positive integer solutions. Markov numbers are um, coordinate of a Markov triple. And um, there is a subtle distinction which I would not dwell on, but there is also a notion of a Markov sequence, which is the largest coordinate uh, of a Markov triple counted with multiplicity. Now, I'm always tempted to say a word, Markov, Markov's papers, which are spectacular and fundamental. Malyshev is of the view that this is one of the handful of papers in number theory, which is comparable with the paper of Riemann. Uh, I wouldn't go so far necessarily. Uh, in any case, Markov proved infinitely an infinite sequence of theorems. I'll spell out the first two. So there is a result which is usually attributed to Hurwitz, and in fact, Hurwitz did give a beautiful and self contained proof, but it's already in Markov's work. So an irrational number um, admits. Um, infinitely many rational approximations p over q such that alpha minus p over q is less than one over square root of five q squared. This is sharp. Is alpha g to the equivalent to the golden ratio. Now, the second result is due to Markov's doctoral advisor. So, on Wikipedia, it says that Chebyshev was Markov's doctoral advisor. This is not. Accurate. Chebyshev was on his committee, but advisors were working at Zolotarev. And um, so this is 1878. So if alpha is not GL to the equivalent to the golden ratio. Then there are infinitely many rational approximations P over Q such that 
alpha minus p over q is less than one over square root of eight q squared. And this is sharp. If alpha is g on to z equivalent to theta two, equal to one plus square root of two. Now, um, I don't use the blackboard. I don't use the blackboard. There is, um, yes, yeah, so on, on the 26th of June, 1878, Zolotarev took the morning train from St. Petersburg traveling on the Warsaw Lane to the station Siversky, where relatives were staying at their summer cottage. At Alexandrovskaya station, he alighted. And when the train started off again, he fell under the engine. He was extricated from under the wheels with crushed left foot and right leg broken above the knee and transported to St. Petersburg Alexandrovskaya Hospital where he died after 12 day, 12 day of agony. So that's how Markov got his topic for the dissertation. And he proved infinitely many things. I'll write down the formula and see what I mean. So MJ, J is Markov number, and I'll write them down in a moment divided by nine mj squared minus four, one over q squared. I will not be able to do justice to Marcos work. The paper I would recommend is by Bombieri. Called the Markov tree. And the Markov tree is the following object. So there is one solution which is saying you <laughs> one. There is a solution which is one, one, two, one to five, one, five, thirteen. Two five twenty nine one thirteen thirty four Four hundred and thirty-three. And let me add one more note to indicate rapid growth. Twenty-nine. Four hundred and thirty-three. Three seven six six six. And the Markov numbers are read off from the tree of four. So one is what gives you the golden ratio. Two, five, thirteen, twenty-nine, thirty-four, eighty-nine, one hundred and sixty-nine, one hundred and ninety-four, one hundred and thirty-three, four hundred and thirty-three. So what am I doing? If you look at this solution, if you look at this equation, so let me denote this variety by x. Before looking at this as a variety, if you look at this equation as a quadratic equation in x1, you see that the two solutions are related simply as x1 plus x1 prime is equal to 3x2x3. 
So if you have one solution, you can obtain another solution by applying what is called Vieta involution. And the group generated by these three involutions when you act at the root solution is what gives you the Markov trio. In other words, Markov tree can be viewed as an orbit under the action of gamma on the root solution. The crucial point I want to make is that the transformations are nonlinear. And that's what makes the problem I'm about to subtract. So um, following the publication, the first uh, paper referencing Markov's work is a paper by Kurwitz. And he so and the, so he looks at the column equation. So he he says I want to find n pupils of integers such that the sum of the squares is divisible by the product. And at some point he comes to n equals three. And it was not, but the motivation for his paper. Is what I just said. And then in uh, 1913, Fabinius wrote a very important paper called the Ubert de Markov Shanzalan. And he's clearly very impressed with Markov. He says these are spectacular results. Nobody seems to have read this paper. Nobody is quoting it. And Fabinius was not easily. Impressed, I think he was once asked to write a paper, uh, sorry, a letter of recommendation for Hilbert. And he, he wrote, he, he is a rather good mathematician, but he would never be as good as Schottky. Anyway, there are many things happening in this paper. One thing uh, that some of you notice is that Markov numbers are uh, the sum of two squares. And he makes a conjecture which is still open called uniqueness conjecture, asserting that M is equal to M S. Uh, it's not going to be important in what follows. It's convenient to assume that it's true. Now, while this is the first paper referencing Markov's paper, the Markov equation itself appears um, uh, implicitly in the, in the work of Poincaré in uh, 1884 and uh, Vought 1889, Fricke 1895, and then uh, in Fricke and Klein, Automorphic forms um, the volume uh, book. And it appears, so this is 1897, and it appears in the form of what is now referred to as a freaky identity. And this is going to be important in what follows. So this is the following. So the, we have two matrices in Pusse, then trace of trace square of A plus. In fact, I should probably write it so that I can keep it. It's, uh, um, <clears throat> so trace square of A plus trace square of B plus trace square of AB is equal to trace of A, trace of B, trace of AB plus 
case of the commutator. So in in the second, sorry, in the in the first volume of uh, atomorphic forms book, a frequent client devote something like 50 pages to this identity and its ramifications. And I also look at the shape of the equation. As at some point, they point out that uh, this equation appears in the work of von Start on the volume of spherical tetrahedron. But they never make a connection to Merkel's work. And it's quite striking because Klein in 1894, 1895, gave a course on quadratic forms at Göttingen. And there are mimeograph notes from this course, something like 600 pages. And I haven't seen reference to Marco's work there. But Klein was also editor of Mathematician Nolan when Marco's papers were published. So either this part of the book was written by Fricke or Klein really didn't know about Marco's work or both. In any case, the first time the connection was made was in the work of Kohn in uh, Harvey Kohn in 1895. Uh, sorry, <laughs> 19. And I'm going to skip uh, some. Sorry. But the next question is how many Markov numbers are there? And it's surprising that this was not as earlier because uh, Markov's academic grandfather was Chebyshev, and he was certainly. Uh, aware of the problems of counting some integers, but the, um, so let me formulate this uh, question about the number of Markov numbers up to t in the following way. So if I look at this variety. This is equivalent to counting the number of points in a ball of size t. The answer here is, and this was mentioned in Tim's book, is log t squared. Now, this result was first obtained by Gould. Um, in the thesis at NYU jointly supervised by Shapiro and Newman. And he obtained it by comparing Markov tree with Fari tree. Zagier, and this is published, obtained a better error term by comparing Markov tree with Euclid tree. And then there are proofs by Mirzakhani and Marcel Riven. And a very beautiful proof is obtained also in the last paper of Berlin. The best error term here, I believe, is given by log t. Log log t. And um, let me just mention the result of Kubrick varieties where following uh, earlier work of Baragar, the answer that we obtained in the work in the so this is joint work with. Uh, McGee and Ronan. So if you ask the same question for full width variety, and let me denote this by V sub n, and you can also add k here, then um, Exponent is of 
for n greater than three is well okay so let me write the, the value so beta of three is two beta of four is numerically in the interval uh, and asymptotically you have to and I'm personally willing to conjecture that the value say for beta of four is in fact transcendent. I think that's that's all what I will have time to say about uh, integral points. Now let me say a word about motivation and uh, our work. So I didn't know anything about Markov numbers until August of 2005 when I got a letter from Peter that I was coming to the Institute. He has an interesting problem related to my thesis. And the problem uh, arose from the question that was asked by Philippe Michel and actually Venkatesh as part of the joint work with Van Zidler and Lindenstrauss related to Duke equidistribution theorem. The question that I asked translated into the language that I'm using here leads to the following. Are there infinitely many square free Markov numbers? So associated with this irrationality are geodesics, which do not become equidistributed and they wanted fundamental geodesics. And that's how you led to this very uh, natural question. And Peter had the insight that this leads to and demands an affirmative answer to the question, which is still open, which is the following. So if you reduce this tree mod P, you get a sequence of graphs, which in fact first appeared in Baraga's thesis, we call the Markov graphs. Do they form a family of expanders? So this is still open. What has been established and what I will turn to next is that the graphs are connected. And this was a question which gave rise to what is now called a fine linear sieve. And I think it's instructive to very quickly take a look at the I find linear sieve examples, which is in many ways parallel to the Markov case. And this is a case of integral Apollonian package. So the equation, which uh, is reminiscent, in fact, of Markov's equation is uh, the current equation, which is the following. So um, two x one squared plus x two squared plus x three squared plus x four squared is equal to x one plus x two plus x three plus x four squared. So what is this an equation for? So if you, uh, so there is a result of Apollonius that if you have three uh, mutually tangent circles, there are exactly two other circles which are tangent to this three. And this is an equation for the curvatures, which is an inverse of the radius of four mutually tangent circles. 
Now, if you have four mutually tangent circles and repeatedly fill in, well, okay, let me uh, proceed as I did before. So if you look at this equation as a quadratic equation in X1, then you see that the two solutions are related simply as follows. So if you have one solution, you can obtain another one by applying the eta involution, which in this case is just an inversion. So if I denote this by x2, uh, no, maybe I should not. So if I start with um, four mutually tangent circles whose curvatures are integral, then this transformation is an inversion between the red and the green circles. So, and um, the crucial point is that the transformation now is a linear one. So if I start with an initial configuration, is, which is an integral, and repeatedly fill in the rooms, and uh, denoting the group generated by A1, A2, A3, A4, and lambda, the configuration can be viewed as an orbit under the action of lambda on A. And in this case, so this is an example of a thin linear group. In this case, we have strong and super strong approximation asserting that the graphs in question, which are obtained in a similar way by reducing uh, the orbit mode P are expanders and consequently, we can see, so not only can we show that there are infinitely many square free numbers among the curvatures, but the set of points with coordinates, which are almost prime, is a risky dense in the orbit. Now, another thing I want to point out is that if you count, so the number of uh, elements in lambda such that this is less than t. This grows like t to the delta, but this is the first dimension of the limit set. So if you go um, one dimension lower, you can get sets of density t to the delta with delta arbitrarily close to zero, so this set is sparse, but not nearly as sparse as the set of Markov numbers, and I raise the result. So, um, by the way, um, before I raise, know that at the beginning, Many of these numbers are prime. So, uh, to, to complete the sentence, so the set of curvatures, or if you go one dimensional, it would be sparse like t to the delta, but not nearly as sparse as the set where we had. So S mark of number grows like A to the square root of F.
So, so in contrast to the case of thin linear groups, we uh, cannot answer the original question about infinitely many square free Markov numbers. But what we can show as a result of establishing some approximation is the following. Um, so let me state the result as uh, almost 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 all lack of numbers are complete. And I guess if you first hear this result, it doesn't sound very impressive. But most all numbers are composite. <laughs> Even that takes a bit of a proof. So this was the second result that Euler established after proving that there are infinitely many primes. It shows that there are not too many primes. And if you look at the sparse sequences, so I guess if, if you look at the numbers, which I guess one can call Huni numbers. It is not known if uh, almost all of them are complete. So, even assuming generalized similar hypotheses, which allowed Huli to give a conditional proof of Arden's conjecture, it is not known. He had to make an additional hypothesis, which is something like Arden's conjecture for square free module. So, the problem we are looking at due to nonlinearity of the action is much harder than the case of thin linear groups, but it, it is much simpler than the case of Tori. So I define Markov graphs informally. Let me define them formally. Um, so Markov graphs, So I have to say what vertices and edges are. So, okay, so vertices are, so vertices are given by reducing this variety mod P and removing the point zero, zero, zero. And this might seem like a cosmetic change I'm making, but in more general situations, some of which we'll see in a moment, one first has to understand finite orbits over C and remove them before the, the statement amounting to strong approximation is made. And then you connect, connect, um, X, to R1 of X, R2 of X, S U of X. And then the, so, um, we're, the basic, um, Strong approximation conjecture. Which is the assertion that these graphs are connected. And I guess we have what might be called the super strong approximation conjecture, asserting that they're highly connected. That is to say, form of feminine expanders. And as I said, we started looking at this in 2005. The graphs appear already in uh, Baragar's thesis, but the first time this conjecture is made in print is in the work of Macaulay and Van der Lee. And it is made in the context of product replacement 
graphs. And let me very quickly uh, explain what I'm actually doing. So there is a uh, product replacement algorithm which is actually used in uh, magma and gap to very quickly obtain a random element in a group, uh, even if you don't know what the group is. So this is sort of black box algorithm and associate it with this algorithm for a finite group. You have product replacement graph. So let me define what they are. So product replacement graphs. So, um, so G is a finite group. So the vertices are given by k tuples of generators. And the edges are given essentially by Nielsen transformation. So so this is um, so the algorithm of first of all, you pick two elements at random and then you multiply on the left or on the right by one of them or by its inverse. And the edges reflect this um, And uh, I, well, I, I <laughs> just want to be consistent with the notation. Right, so then, so, uh, so I, so multiplication on the right is as follows. So you, you, you have. Uh, G1, and then G I multiplied by G sub J plus minus one, G sub K, and L I J plus minus is defined similarly. And the people in group T were looking at this under the name of T systems earlier. And the first result, certainly one of the first results, in fact, I think the first result, not the first, it was a result of Dan Woody for solvable groups, I think. But the first result on connectivity for simple groups was uh, by Gilman in, um, 1977. We show that uh, for SL to P, this is connected for K greater equal to three. Now, um, in uh, two thousand six, uh, Park and I. Prove that under the same assumption, so for K greater than I expanders, if SL2P is strongly uniformly expanded. And that is to say expanding with respect to all generators. And this uh, Emmanuel Breyer and myself proved to be true. In fact, we proved it during my second visit in 2007, 2008. I think it appeared in 2010. So true for 
Didn't have too many problems. Don't see too well. And Emmanuel, in his talk uh, in October, announced that he, with Becker and Barju, extended this result to all uh, algebraic groups over finite fields. Now, for SL2, so for k equals 2, you cannot possibly have connectivity because of the free identity. And what Macaulay and Wanderley conjectured was that this is only abstraction, effectively. And so I'm going to state the results now for Markov uh, equation, with the exception of theorem four, which is a recent breakthrough of Will Chen. Uh, they're true also for more general varieties. And if I have time, I'll comment on uh, that. But this is one example of a more general variety. So let me state, so I stated theorem three. Now, what is the blackboard? What is the best blackboard move? I have time, so. A Vietum. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Should switch to to two. Yeah, yeah but I, shall I? <laughs> shall I? What shall I erase? Okay, I can. <laughs> okay, I can erase everything. So. So the first is now. Is um, common. so so these are results with Ruben and Sarna, and it has two parts. So the Markov graphs. And uh, giant connected component. We call a cage. In the sense that what is not in the giant component is very small. So note that the size of the Markov graphs is p squared. The um, second result is that has been improved by uh, Spalinski and collaborators, but let me say what we proved. So every Gamma orbit dp satisfies uh, the lower bound the second result is all right, so let so let e be the set of primes. Which some approximation fails. <clears throat> then this set is also very small. So if I look at how many exceptions are there up to T, this is 
The first result is the breakthrough of wheelchair that I mentioned. And this is the product. So every gamma orbit GP has size. Divisible by P. And at the moment, this result needs module interpretation and uh, it is true for Markov only. Now, the fifth result is. Following so every gamma orbit. No, I'm sorry. So assume that Markov graphs are connected to P. Then they are connected for all modular P to the K. So for all connected for all K. And now combining theorems. Uh, one, four, five, one, four, and five, we get the following result. So for all sufficiently large P, Gamma at minimal. On the PI. And I will not have time to talk about the proof, but the starting point for our work was the work of Goldman, the exotic. Um, and the basicity of the action of gamma on uh, the compact field components of the character variety of the factory class group of one structure torus. We can prove now something stronger minimality. So I guess to, uh, the people working in dynamics, what I can say is that ask not only what dynamics can do for arithmetic, ask what arithmetic can do for dynamics. Thank you very much. What does it mean that every orbit is dense? I think I was going too fast or too slow. <laughs> but, uh, can you clarify what you last said? I mean, what, so when you look at the actual nothing constant. Um... What I was saying is that, so the starting point for our, so Goldman uses then twists yes. and we look at rotations and we need to, so we connect. So the cage is obtained by sort of looking at the conic sections and connecting in the conic sanctions by the what P analog of them twist. Mm -hmm. But what we can prove by this method is something stronger than algorithmicity. We can prove minimality of opinions. And the proof uses uh, Weibar. And crucially, 
in this setting, we use semi radiotrotter theorem for modular hyperbolas, which is obtained from expansion and alpha flattening in SL2 over whichever modulus it is established. So when, when you want to say minimality on the character variety. No, so this is the result, which is, so the, the connectivity of Markov graphs for that mod P to the KZ is equivalent to this statement. And there are results of minimality. I forgot the name of them. C, X, E, yeah. I assume the both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this result certainly uses uh, non-trivial number theoretic input. So while it has purely ergodic theoretic formulation, the proof, I think it's fair to say, uh, it's, you know, I, maybe one can establish it by purely ergodic methods, but at the moment, the proof uses. Uh, but, but you don't, I mean, if, it, if I, I can look at the, so your replacement for the part of the character I you look at is basically the mark of the mark variety. It makes, so the action, this is an integral action, and it makes sense to look at it over periodics. And I would say, so let me just say, so I think having a giant connected component is an analog of ergodicity, but full connectivity is equivalent to minimality. And full connectivity, if you also include chance result, certainly uh, has a pretty substantial number theoretic input. I mean, one thing you could say compared to the character, real character variety is there are many components. It could be a compact component, but the beauty is that the periodic integers are compact and X star ZP is compact and the Vieta moves preserve integrality. So that's a compact space. <laughs> you have every chance of not just being a ergodic, but minimal. Yeah. And you're, I mean, the moral of all the stories everywhere, mapping class groups act as transitively as possible on what they can act. <laughs> so if you find something variant good, but then it's usually going to try be transitive as all groups like to be. Of course, the, it's the super strong approximation conjecture with amount to, I think it's called stronger condition. And that is open. Is that expected to be true for these higher dimensional orbits, hypersurfaces? The, the corresponding graphs get reduced mod p. That's a very good question. I I, I would ex I, I have not so certainly connectivity I expect to be true. I I would be more comfortable answering if we did a numerical experiment to see. I don't see a reason why not, but uh, so. I would expect them to be expanders as well, but we haven't looked at it uh, numerically. That's a very good question. So th this is evidence. Uh, so in fact, for K greater than three, the action of uh, group of automorphism of a free group is now, so uh, this result is superseded for K greater than four, it is superseded by the proof which, uh, so there was a breakthrough of Vazava where he proved uh, property T for group of automorphisms of free group using um, uh, linear algebra. Very uh, cleverly using indefinite programming, I think is the catch word. But, uh, it, this was an open problem, and 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 then he's I think he proved it for any who's five, and then it was extended 
Ay, ya. No bacon. Second. So in the setting of Markov graphs, if you look at the number of generators, three or greater, the expansion is proved. And that is an, that is an evidence, besides numerical evidence, that Markov graphs are expanders to me. Questions? Is this P effective in any way? Um, not really. So I, I think uh, Eleva Fuchs has the best result to that. It's effective, just massive. Okay. <laughs> she wrote the number down. So it is effective in a certain way. Uh, so there is a gap between. No, no, uh, if P is bigger than something like a number she wrote down, 10 to the 300 or something, then it's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be useful. <laughs> I think Chen uh, in his paper mentions her, but it's just effectivizing it with the entire, all the parts. Okay. Is there but, some interpretation of uh, the exponent of P in Chen's result? Um, you mean the, the power of Not the exponent, I mean the I would say it's ingenious. I mean he gives a modular interpretation of this connectivity. This connectivity is equivalent to the connectivity of certain moduli spaces of G structures where G is SL to FP. And initially he was using this to prove the spaces are connected. Then he discovered that he a certain line bundle, which he computes two different ways, the degree of a line bundle uh, can be computed in two different ways. In one way, you get the divisibility, and the other way, you, you, you get the number. So it's a, a bit like a silo kind of theorem, and it should have an elementary proof. Right now, he's using algebraic geometry. Uh, I would love to get rid of that, but right now, they are inputs that. So we don't have a proof of direct evidence. That's a very clean statement that every orbit is divisible by P. We didn't even notice it. I mean, we knew it's true because the conjecture is true. <laughs> uh, the, so it's only one of chance proof that there is a purely group theoretic statement. I think it's in section yeah. four. And to me, at least, it's conceivable that it should have a purely group theoretic proof. But at the moment, uh, he uses a very sophisticated machinery. Usually, when you're proving moduli spaces are connected, like in the lean Mumford or something, then you get to a group theory and then the group theory does the job. And here, it really is the synthesis of the two, which is working at this point. There is a, of course, so say if you want to prove connectivity of K the graphs of S on 2P, right? So there is this result of Margulis that the girls of this graph. Now P and that then can be so that that then can be used to show that you you get all of us onto P and, and in inside of Margulis's proof there is he uses the fact that it's divisible by P. So there is a certain superficial uh, you know what I'm yeah there is a certain superficial resemblance but uh, at the moment there is no purely group theoretic proof. So I encourage all the group theorists to take a look at this statement and. Because then potentially it can be extended to uh, more general set. For example, the this uh, Macalo Vanderly variety with trace of the commutator plus two added to that. Other questions? 
You're good. Perfect.